Okay, so in this video, we will discuss how to locate the maximum and minimum value of a function on a given interval. And we'll see that our conclusion will be quite simple. The only points where a function can attain a maximum and or a minimum value are the endpoints of the interval, if there are endpoints, and the critical points inside of the interval, therefore points where the derivative does not exist or is equal to zero. So let's see why this is the case. Well, we'll base our discussion on the derivative. There are two possibilities. The derivative exists or it does not. So let's start with the case of the derivative not existing. So f prime of x, say for a given value of x, does not exist. Could we have at a point where the derivative does not exist, a point where the function attains a maximum and or a minimum value? And the answer is yes, and we've already seen an example of this. We can simply consider the absolute value function on the interval, say, from negative 1 to why not 2. So here's the graph. Y is the absolute value of x function. Now the y value at negative 1 is 1, and the y value at 2 is 2. Okay. Well, if you notice here, the minimum value attained by the absolute value function is 0. And what is interesting about this point? We've already seen before that this point is a point where the derivative is undefined. And you can see it geometrically. There are an infinite, because of the cusp at x equals 0, there are an infinite number of possible tangent lines here. And so f of 0, f prime of 0, does not exist. So the function is not differentiable at x equals 0. But what's interesting about 0 is at this point, the function attains its minimum value. So x equals 0 is an absolute minimum of the function on the interval from negative 1 to 2. So we have to check points where the derivative does not exist because at those points the function may or may not attain a max or a min value, but we had to check them because it is a possibility. Okay, so we have to check points where the derivative does not exist, and here's one example of this where the derivative at 0 does not exist, and yet the function attains its minimum value of 0 at x equals 0. So this point is an absolute minimum value an absolute minimum, sorry, where the minimum value also happens to be 0. Let's forget the derivative for a second and look at what else is interesting here about this function. Well, if you notice, the maximum value of the function occurs at x equals 2. And the maximum value is also 2, but 2 is an endpoint of the interval, right? So x equals 2 is an absolute maximum of the function. But x equals 2 is an endpoint of the interval. So in the simple example, we have essentially half of our conclusion. We can see from this simple example that the function attains its minimum value of 0 at the absolute minimum of x equals 0, which is a point where the derivative does not exist, so is a critical point, and the function attains its maximum value on the interval at the right end point. So when looking for a maximum 
or a minimum value of a function, we have to check the points where the derivative does not exist. We have to check those, and we also have to check endpoints of the interval. Here the interval goes from negative 1 to 2, and the maximum value happens to occur at the right endpoint of the interval. Okay, points where the derivative is undefined are, are important, and points of the interval are important when looking for a max or a minimum value. Well, let's look now at the only other possibility where the derivative is now defined, does exist, and let's see what happens then. Okay, so now the derivative does exist, and now if you think of it, we have three possibilities. The derivative is positive, negative, or equal to zero. So let's break it down. First possibility, f prime of x is bigger than zero. Well, we know that if the derivative is positive, the function is increasing, right? For argument's sake, assume that x is positive and the value of the function is positive there. And now if you have an increasing function, it could of course be increasing concave down, or it could be, if you want, I would write here, increasing concave up. And you ask, okay, at a point where the derivative is positive, the function is increasing concave down or concave up, could this point give us a maximum value? Well, clearly no because to the right of our point there's an even larger y value and the same is true here. Could this point be a minimum value? The answer is again no. To the left of our point there's an even smaller y value in both cases. So at a point where the derivative is positive the function is increasing and obviously it can never give us a maximum y value or a minimum y value. So we don't have to check those points. Well, what if the derivative is negative? Well, now the function is decreasing. And again, we're going to ask, could these points give us a maximum or a minimum value? Well, the function be, could be decreasing concave up, or it could be decreasing, of course, concave down. Well, could this point be a maximum value? The answer is clearly no. If you move to the left of the point, you get an even larger value. Could this point be a minimum? Clearly no. Move to the right, and you get an even smaller y value. Same when the curve is concave down. Could this point be a maximum value? The answer is no. Move to the left, and you have an even larger y value. Move to the right, and you have an even smaller y value. So when the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing concave up or concave down, and it can never yield a maximum or a minimum value. The last case, what if the derivative, given that it does exist, is equal to zero? This is the third and final possibility. Well, let's think of the second derivative giving us concavity. We could have a point where the curve is concave up. If the derivative is zero, the curve is flat, and if the curve is concave up, then the graph must look something like this, in which case we get a minimum value. So we have a minimum value here. Of course, the curve could be concave down. So the first derivative is zero, the curve is flat. If it is concave down, it would look like this, and then we'd get a maximum value at our critical point. But of course, the second derivative could be zero, so classification could fail. And here's where sometimes we can be fooled. It's not because the derivative is zero that you absolutely have 
a minimum or a maximum value. Right? You could have an inflection point. Think of x cubed. The graph of x cubed around 0 looks like this. At this point, the derivative is 0, but it's neither a maximum nor a minimum. Right? Move to the right of your point. You have an even larger y value, so it can't be a maximum. Move to the left of your point, and you have an even smaller y value, so it can't be a minimum. So you have to be careful. It's not because the derivative is zero that you absolutely have either a maximum or a minimum value. But the bottom line is you have to check because there is a possibility of having a minimum or a maximum value. So we have to check those points. And now think of our conclusion. We're done now. So let's go back to the beginning. On an interval, a function can only attain a maximum or a minimum value at a point where the derivative does not exist, at an endpoint of the interval, or at a point where the derivative is zero. But we can combine the first and third statement into one, because points where the derivative is equal to zero, or undefined, are what we call critical points. And that's our conclusion. A function can only attain a maximum and or minimum value at a critical point or at an endpoint of the interval. And that's it. So let's state now our conclusion, which is, you have to admit, remarkably simple and elegant. So here's our conclusion. So consider the function f of x on some interval. So a function can only attain a maximum slash minimum value on an interval, so we always will consider a given function over a given interval, so a function can only attain a maximum slash minimum value on an interval at our two possibilities, a critical point And of course, critical point is a point where the derivative is zero or undefined. So at a critical point inside the interval, or at an endpoint of the interval. Now, of course, the interval could be infinite or open, and there may not be endpoints. But the bottom line stays the same. A function can only attain a maximum or a minimum on a given interval at either a critical point inside the interval or at an endpoint of the interval. And that's our conclusion. There is only one thing missing here, and that is sometimes not every function on a given interval will attain a maximum and or a minimum value. So there may be no max, no min for a particular function on a given interval. But this will become apparent once you study the critical points and the possible behavior of the function around the endpoints of the interval or as you move away from the center of the interval. And Whenever in doubt, what you can do is produce a rough sketch of the function. Now there is one last question. Is there a case where we are guaranteed that the function will attain a maximum and a minimum value? And the answer is yes. This is called the extreme value theorem. We will not prove it. It's a bit too difficult at this point. 
but we'll at least state it so at least you're aware of it. The extreme value theorem. So we already know that if a function attains a max or a min value on an interval, it has to happen at a critical point or at an endpoint of the interval. This theorem will tell us that if we have two conditions satisfied, the function will always attain a maximum and a minimum value inside of the interval. And here's the theorem. So if f of x is continuous, on a closed and bounded interval a b then f of x will attain a maximum slash minimum both value inside the interval. And that's the extreme value theorem. So if those two conditions are met, automatically the function f will have a maximum and a minimum value inside the interval from a, b. And those two conditions are quite simply, the function must be continuous on the interval, and the interval must be closed. Closed means that the endpoints a and b are contained, so we don't reject them. a is part of the interval, and so is b. Bounded means that a and b are finite numbers. We can't have infinity here or negative infinity. So the interval goes from a to b, a and b are finite real numbers, and both a and b are included inside the interval. If those two conditions are met, automatically the function will attain a maximum and a minimum value inside the interval. And of course, if you are in such a case, you will find the maximum and minimum value at either the endpoints of the interval or at critical points inside the interval. And that's it. In the following videos, we'll consider examples of these two results.